Hi everyone, today another story on the topic of big pharma corruption. I will not shut up about it until the day I die. Today's video is going to be about the article written in the British medical journal titled The Illusion of Evidence-Based Medicine. Link will be in the description. Um, it's a really short article. I highly encourage you to read it. Uh, I have already talked about some of the things mentioned in this article, but I wanted to do this video anyway, since obviously I'm just a small YouTuber and no one really cares about what I think. And um, this piece is written by actual researchers in, in one of the oldest and, uh, and most respected medical journals on the planet. So in this article they explain why evidence-based medicine is an illusion. They just straight up say that patients suffer and die needlessly because of adverse impact of commercial interests on the research agenda, on universities and regulators. I won't describe in detail all the mechanisms of corruption. I did that already and if you are interested you can watch my other video on this topic or just read the article. Uh, all the links will be in the description. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about one detail that was new to me. It is how the research is conducted and regulated. Regulating agencies very often do not see the raw data of the trial. Uh, so the research is funded and performed by the industry and then it's regulated by the industry funded agency without even seeing the raw data very often. That is absurd. I have no other words for it. The authors conclude that until these problems are corrected, evidence-based medicine will remain an illusion. Most people do not understand this, unfortunately. Right now, you never know for sure if the study was properly conducted or ghost-ridden or manipulated in some other way. Now, let's look a little bit at the solutions that are proposed in this article. The authors propose to regulate the industry better, to stop the industry funding of regulating agencies, uh, to tax the corporations to get money for independent research and to post online the trial data, data so independent people could access and evaluate it. All of these proposals are good. They will definitely make things better and they are feasible. However, I personally do not think they are going to be enough to fix everything. No matter how much we try to regulate things, we will still keep living in the world where people have gigantic financial motivation to develop one type of drug and zero financial motivation to research repurposed or natural medications. And all the money will still be concentrated in the hands of tiny number of people at the top of drug companies and they will probably use that money to go around the regulations somehow. And it really hurts all of us, even the richest of the rich. Ideally, I would like to live in a world where medical innovators are generously rewarded for their work, regardless of the profitability of their discovery. There are many things that can be done. Uh, on an international level, we could cancel patents maybe and give fat paychecks to all the innovators. Or on a national level, it can be done through various policy changes. Um, I already talked about all of this previously and I mean, it can be done. However, I get that it's unlikely because of how much influence money has in politics. Uh, it's a pie in the sky, really. Regulations that authors of this article propose are a bare minimum. They are relatively realistic and um, that could be a good start. So now let's talk about what regular people can do about it. We can spread the word, we can fight for getting money out of politics, vote for the right politicians. Politicians with neoliberal views or the ones that take donations from large corporations will not fix anything. 
They are the ones who brought us into this mess. All of that is, of course, easier said than done, uh, because in a lot of countries you can only choose between the candidates pre-approved by big business. That is why getting money out of politics is so important. <sighs> Corporate tyranny is just as bad as government tyranny. I'm fairly certain that a very large number of people are dying because of this. Spreading the word is also important. Almost no one is talking about this. Um, Joe Rogan and Russell Brand talked about it, and um, after that plenty of people called them conspiracy theorists and tried to cancel them, which is very discouraging. Elon Musk is also aware of this situation, which is great because he's such a powerful and influential person. I disagree with him on 100 different things. I don't know his motives, but if he can do something for freedom of speech on social media, that'll be great. Freedom of speech is essential to fight tyranny of any kind. Bad ideas exist, that's not good obviously, but I think that a handful of people controlling our speech and deciding what is and what is in disinformation is much worse. Of course, speech cannot be completely free, but it should be as free as reasonably possible. Whatever damage non-violent bad ideas can cause, censorship can potentially be much more damaging, in my opinion. I also want to say a couple of words about Elon Musk and his trouble with depression. He has been open about this for a while, and um, he is also open about his insane work schedule. And I just don't understand why, like why? Why is he doing it to himself? A big part of recovery from depression is stress reduction, proper sleep schedule, and reasonable work-life balance. He can definitely afford to do all of that, but he doesn't do it. I just uh, feel like this whole thing about who's got the most money is a little bit of a pointless genitalia measuring contest and this contest is not worth damaging your health for. And yet this is the culture that exists today. It's virtuous and noble to work yourself into an illness. I did that also when I was younger and I paid a price for that. I'm not doing it anymore, uh, now health is my number one priority. That's it for today, see you next time, thanks for watching.